gas influx that entering the liquid column from the bottom part of the well will create problems. Gas bubble will only migrating up and not going back into the formation. If the well is fully closed for a long time, the gas bubble is migrating up with no expansion and it will create overpressure inside the well. If the well is not closed or we have a leak, gas bubble will expanding freely and it will have uncontrolled expansion, too much expansion. So it will decrease the bottom hole pressure and we may have extra influx. One of the primary objective during well control is controlling the bubble expansion while migrating up, allowing the bubble to expand under control and maintain bottom hole pressure constant. Therefore, we can avoid overpressure inside the well and we can also avoid extra influx. Gas will follow boil gas law principles. So pressure and the temperature of the gas bubble will have an effect on the volume. But for most of IWCF calculation, we ignore the temperature effect. Therefore, we have simplified version of boil gas law principles. Pressure multiplied by volume of a gas bubble will be constant or pressure multiplied by volume in first condition will be the same with pressure multiplied by volume in second condition. Let's see an example below. So suppose we have cake at the bottom of the well and the volume of the cake is 4 barrels and the pressure inside the bubble is 4500 psi which is the same with formation pressure. Now, as the influx migrating up, the choke is open a little bit to allow the influx to expand. So, in principle, we are bleeding off mud to create more rooms for the gas. So, if we bleed off 5 barrel of mud, then the new influx volume, therefore, is 9 barrel. Now, what is the new pressure of the gas bubble? P1 V1 equal to P2 V2. Our new pressure inside the gas bubble will be 2000 psi. If the well is shut in for a long period of time and the gas bubble is allowed to migrate up without expansion, we will say that the pressure inside the bubble is constant. But when the gas bubble is migrating higher, surface pressure will increase and bottom hole pressure will also increase. We will see in this illustration. Let's say we have 6000 feet of well and the mud inside the well is 0.5 psi per feet. So every 2000 feet of mud column, we will have 1000 psi of hydrostatic pressure. Let's say we have influx at the bottom of the well and our influx pressure is 3025 psi. Our hydrostatic pressure of course is 3000 psi because we have 0 0.5 psi per feet mud inside 6000 feet of well. Because our gas bubble pressure is higher than hydrostatic, then at surface, we will have the bubble pressure minus the hydrostatic equal to 25 psi. And at the bottom, we will have 3025 psi. Now, let's see when the bubble start to migrate higher. So now the bubble is migrating from 6000 feet to 4000 feet. So the bubble is 2000 feet higher. And what happened to the bottom hole? At the bottom, we will see the pressure increase because now the pressure at the bottom is equal to the pressure of the bubble 
plus the hydrostatic pressure of the mud below the bubble. So we have additional of 1000 psi and therefore our bottom hole pressure will be 4025 psi. The pressure at surface is equal of the pressure of the bubble minus the hydrostatic pressure of the mud between the surface and the bubble. In this case, we have 2000 psi of hydrostatic pressure of the mud from the surface to the bubble at 4000 feet. So, at surface, we will have 1025 PS. Now, let's see when the bubble move higher from 4000 feet to 2000 feet. What happened at the bottom? At the bottom, we will have bubble pressure plus the hydrostatic pressure of the mud below the bubble. We have 2000 PSI of mud hydrostatic below the bubble and therefore our new bottom hole pressure will be 5025 PSI. We will have less mud above the bubble. So our surface pressure will be the bubble pressure 3025 PSI minus the remaining hydrostatic above the bubble which is 1000. So we have 2025 PSI at surface. Now let's see when the bubble moving higher until surface. By the time the bubble arrive at surface just below the closed POP, then we will have extra 1000 PSI at the bottom of the well. The bottom hole pressure now is 6025 PSI and the surface pressure is becoming 3025 PSI. When the bubble is migrating up with the constant pressure inside the bubble, surface pressure increasing and bottom hole pressure is also increasing. Now, this is the summary of it. If the well is closed and we are not allowing the gas bubble to expand, then the gas bubble will have constant volume and the gas bubble also have constant pressure. But as the gas bubble migrating up higher, then pressure inside the well above and below the bubble will increase. Surface pressure will increase because surface pressure is equal to pressure of the gas bubble minus the hydrostatic above the bubble. And when the bubble moving up, the hydrostatic above the bubble decreasing. Bottom hole pressure will increase because the bottom hole pressure is equal to bubble pressure plus the hydrostatic below the bubble and the hydrostatic of the mud below the bubble will increase because the bubble migrating higher. So it is not enough only to shut in the well when we have a kick. The influx must be removed out of the well bore within appropriate time because if we just close in and then doing nothing, the bubble will migrating up and create extra pressure. If the extra pressure is too high, then we may break the formation and we may also cause the equipment leak and so on. So we cannot let this thing to happen. Now let's see if we have a kick. Initially, we shut in the well properly, but then we have a leak or a rupture at surface and the well continue to flow. So, in this case, we will have uncontrolled expansion. So, the expansion of the gas 
will be too much. And when the gas is expanding too much, the gas will push the mud out of the wellbore. And when the gas is pushing the mud out of the wellbore, the hydrostatic pressure of the mud will decrease. And therefore, the bottom hole pressure will also decreasing and we will have more influx from the reservoir. Of course, if the condition is continue for long period of time, at the end, we will have the whole well fill up by the reservoir fluid and we have continue flow from reservoir and the well is producing. So in open well or if we have leak at surface, we will have uncontrolled bubble expansion. So we have over expansion. The bubble volume will increase too much and the extra volume of the gas will push the mud out of the well. The bottom hole pressure will decrease mainly because less hydrostatic of the mud because we don't have enough mud inside the well. Therefore, we will also have extra in. So, after shut in the well, it is important to ensure that there is no leak from the well. Any leak will lead to uncontrolled influx expansion and decreasing bottom hole pressure. And it will make more influx coming from the formation into the well bore. Bigger influx volume will make the well more difficult to control. And we also have higher risk of having problem. For example, erosion on the choke or on the surface line, mud gas separator overflow, and so on. Now, how to do a proper well control? So, if we have a well already shut in with the influx at the bottom of the well, we must bleed off a little bit when the influx moving up to compensate for migration. So, by bleeding off a little bit, we create more room for the gas to expand but we limit the expansion to maintain bottom hole pressure constant. We will see casing pressure increase, but bottom hole pressure constant. So we keep controlling our job until the influx arrive at surface. Now, if the expansion is under control, then the gas bubble volume, it will still increasing because we bleed off, but we only bleed off as required. We only bleed off to compensate the migration. The gas bubble pressure will decrease. Casing pressure will increase because less mud inside the well, we still bleed off and also the bubble is moving up closer to the surface. Pressure at the depth above the bubble will increase, but not as much as in a closed well. On the other hand, the pressure below the bubble will be constant. So we maintain bottom hole pressure constant. Now, what if the influx is not gas? If the influx is oil, the expansion will be less severe compared to the gas. We still have some expansion, but much less compared to the gas. But oil may contain some gas in solution, and the gas may be released later. So we still expect to have 
almost the same situation as a gas influx. What if the influx is water? Water has very small compressibility and does not expand significantly. And therefore, if we have water kick, the surface pressure will not be changed. Very often, it is difficult to know what kind of influx is in our well. If we don't know what our influx is, then we just consider the worst case that influx is gas and remove the influx in first priority.